funny for in terms of parents in terms about the upbringing i do see that there is a bit of media saturation that's kind of uh influencing how we think of that uh but i was wondering then that since you clarified on that matter what about barriers to your parents understanding of their their child's mental health yeah i think this all goes back to like being willing to have there's a lot of value that's placed on and this is a generational trauma piece here there's a value there's a lot of value protect placed on protecting the family name, protecting our identity and protecting how we look like to other people. This also comes from a place of survival for them, right? In order to not be looked at as a problem or to be a troublemaker or to do be, be difficult, that then made sure that you secured income, you had a job, you had a livelihood, right? You don't stand out, you blend in. This was the same thing like we experienced generationally growing up in the same way with hiding our, um, our cultural name or our cultural outfits, right? Or our identity. So going back to your question, where is the emphasis placed on protecting the family and what people are going to think? Or is the emphasis placed on having difficult conversations that will bring out difficult feelings that will then have to be processed and there will be room for that, right? Both sides are parents are holding a different anxiety. If I bring up stuff that my kid's having a difficult time, I have to face this. Not only do I have to face how I am as a parent, I have to make a change and unheal and I mean, heal and unlearn values that have been placed on me and witness that as well as make room for a relationship like this with my kid, where we're talking about these things. It always comes back down to are the parents willing to have this type of communication with their children, this very open communication without it looking like, without them getting personalized, personalizing it or getting defensive around, well, you're saying you're struggling with school or you're not doing well, I've done everything for you. I've given you this. I've been working. They are working, but at the same time, don't personalize it. It's not about you. We'll meet your child where they're at in the time that they're at. And if you can get past that, that can make all the difference. I really like that. See, this is great getting to speak to uh, someone that's in the field because you really get a lot of good insight. Um, it's true. That's another thing. Our parents do that a lot. You know, I don't know if that's an immigrant parent thing. But oh my goodness, if you are doing like poorly or anything, uh, you're feeling down or you're feeling angry, it's always what you were mentioning. It's a, like a reflection of them. All of a sudden they're like, whoa, what did I do wrong to you? I give you everything. Why are you doing this? And I really like how you say that where it's like, no, 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 but it's not about you, right? It's about me, like how I'm feeling and stuff like that. So, uh, and I do also like how you brought up about protecting the family name and the image. See, that's the thing. like. Sometimes those things take a priority over their child's mental health. Sometimes, you know what I mean by that? And this is what comes from a collectivistic culture versus an individualistic culture, right? That's because true. that family name is related to, it's not just that child's name. It's the entire family's name. It's the community name, right? So it is a reflection onto them. Whereas some parents, maybe in a more individualistic or Western culture, they can maybe separate that too and not personalize it so much. Not always, uh, but more so. See, you know, that's like, you know, that's what, what these podcasts are about, man. We get to learn about these things. Yeah, that's great insight. Like, once again, it's true. It's really difficult to sometimes because we're sometimes ethnocentric in the sense that we were, we grew up all here. Like, this is our reality. So we look at ourselves. Like, for me, you know, I'll look at my name. I'm, I'm Christian. You know, I'm not Mr. Figueroa, like something like that. Right. So I understand how that works. Um, but we don't really reflect on it as much because we're here. Right. So we're always about, it's about me. It's okay. It's me. It's my, if I screw up, it's, my, it's my name. It's fine. But to them, it's like, no, no, no. Our whole family's going to see this. It's yeah. a shame on all of us. Right. right? A lot of, I think, and I think that's a privilege that comes with being born in the U S is like, you're growing up in a very ethnocentric environment, mm -hmm. right? A very individualistic identity as in a way to, you should be able to develop it. If, if the story of the immigrant child or the first generation child is not figuring out who their identity is, right, and who they are outside of their family, I don't know what is the story or the narrative that we're all trying to figure out here, right? So there should be a healthy level of who am I alongside my family, but that allowance of as you get older, 18, 19, 20, allowing your young adult, not your child, to figure out who they are themselves because you learn a lot more about who you are from the experiences that your parents probably don't want you to have. <laughs> yeah that, yeah that's, that's very true yeah most definitely um right 
So if you want to hear more stories, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. To support more youth by youth-led projects, visit us at youthspeak.ca where you can donate and spread youth mental health awareness. Youth Speak Performance Charity. Speak. Inspire. Change.